Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. She's back. She's recuperating. She's trying. She's had vertigo. I'm trying. Vertigo for the last couple of days. As long as I sit still and look straight ahead, I'm okay. Look at me. I'm looking at the screen. If I look at you, I have to move my head and then I'll be not okay. Okay. I make your world turn. That's right. That's 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 what that. Unfortunately, means. when I spin, my stomach gets upset too. So that comes with it. But anyway. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about this. A lot of people are gonna have upset stomachs. I think working in journalism, it's not a good time to be a journalist. Uh, I started out as a an actual journalist. Believe right? it or not. I know it's so funny. People keep making digs at us, and it's like actually, 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 actually. Neon Neon was a, a managing editor. Like 25 years at ago. A couple of different ago. publications. We also have blogs that are considered newsworthy um, media sites. I was running I was running one of the highest circulation uh, weekly papers in the state when I was about 25, 26 years old. Right. Because so, I was but we workaholic, as you can attest. But I was we, a workaholic. we don't know what journalism we don't know is. What anyway. Anything, what anything is. Anyway. We didn't um, go to journalism college. I didn't go to journalism college. I did not. I wanted to be an artist. Let's, uh, and that, you know, just didn't pay very well. Neither is journalism. So we're going to talk. That's the point. Neither is journalism. Neither is journalism. And that's why I went into web development and yada, yada, yada. Let's talk about this because this is, uh, this is inevitable. This is the snap. This is <laughs> the end of journalism as we've known it. And we're going to see a lot of stories like this over the coming months and probably next two or three years. A lot of layoffs, a lot of people trying to go on strike, and I don't blame them. I actually don't blame newsrooms for going on strike because at least then you get a parachute. You know, in a lot of cases, you unionize, you get a parachute, and you get more money when they do snap you. Mm -hmm. But they're going to snap you because right. they don't need you anymore. And right now, maybe isn't the best time to ask for more money. I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, the LA Times slashed more than 20% of its newsroom staff as the paper confronts a financial crisis. And that's the LA Times. That's a pretty big paper. But they're all they're all confronting a financial crisis. I mean, it's not good, guys. No, Condé Nast uh, union workers walk out following a layoff announcement. And Condé Nast owns a lot of different magazines. They and stuff. do. Yes. Uh, they own like half of the magazines you've heard of. They probably own them mm -hmm. at this point. And now we've got uh, you know with websites we've got Geo Media, The Onion, and some other sites, AV Club and Deadspin. This happened like two years ago. They're I know, threatening. They aren't thinking this one through. They're they're threatening a walkout. I'm like. They shut Jezebel down before selling it off dirt cheap. You don't think they're just going to shut you down? I, I, I'm sorry. At this point, it might actually make more financial sense for these companies to just shut the blogs down rather than continue to pay you and just take the L and then just write it off as a loss and just be like, due to macroeconomic circumstances, yep, we had to shut it down. So we're just going to write off a couple million dollars, bada bing, bada boom, move on to something else. Uh, because we had last year, record numbers of media jobs were cut. It's going to get worse this year. Uh, AI is definitely not helping, but it's not going anywhere. And I think to the venture capital has, which we've said before, the venture capital has run out. So these media outlets, most of them, which were bankrolled in part by venture capital for the last like 10 years, a lot of digital outlets, especially, they can't just reach in and get more money. It's gone. Um, there's no lifeline. They already use their, their call. So let's, uh, let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants guys. Can you muster up another woohoo? Woohoo. There we go. There we go. The woohoos are back. Uh, this is coming from CNN. The LA times slashes more than 20% of newsroom staff as the paper confronts a financial crisis. Um, yeah, they're going to cut 115 journalists. It's the most severe the most severe workforce reduction in the 142 year history of the newspaper. Mm. That's 20% of the newsroom. Yeah. 94 of those cuts will be among unionized employees. Okay. So at least they'll have some kind of, and it's in California too. So it's in California. Have, so the thing about California, they're lucky in that regard because they have more um, hoops. They have to go through to make sure people get the retain some money and help for a while. Where we're from, that's not the case. No, California. So if you're a worker, it works to your benefit because they have the Warren Act and they have all that, you know, the, the other stuff. It's harder to, to get rid of people, right? Uh, as an employer, 
it's not good because it's harder to get rid of people, especially people that aren't bringing it. You but can't get rid of them. States like Pennsylvania, it's work for hire. So basically, they could just fire you tomorrow and that's it. Yeah, they could just decide, hey, I don't like the shirt you wore to work and that's it. Yeah, they don't have to give you a reason. They don't have doesn't... to give you anything when you leave. I, I, no. You know, unless it's under your contract, as we found no, out. No severance. I got, uh, I was actually management position. At, uh, I think and I a salary position. Salaried management position. And, um, you know, I would have expected some kind of severance or something, but since I didn't have a contract, they weren't obligated to give me one. So they didn't. They're like, yeah, you're done. I'm like, do I get any? No. Nope. Well, can I file for unemployment? Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, what do I do in the interim? Like the couple of weeks is going to take me to get unemployment. I don't know. That's your problem. Thanks for, thanks for the, you thanks know. Thanks for saving our ass multiple times. Thanks for Bye. saving. Yeah. Thanks for all those late nights you worked here. Thanks for working weekends. Thanks for, yeah. Cause I was salaried. Right. So I was expected to put in extra time. Yep. See ya. Here you go. Got to be out of here by noon. I'm like, holy shit. That's how, that's how the world works. That's how the world works. Wow. It took me this long to figure out how the world actually works. Uh, yeah. They're going to lay off a quarter of their union staff. But again, if you're unionized, I will give you that. And as much as I, I dunk on unions, cause I think they're greedy and I don't think they benefit their individual members. I think they're about the, uh, the organization. At least you will have some kind of a, a parachute, right? Uh, they said the total number of employees being laid off is devastating. Said there is uh, nonetheless far fewer than the total number expected last week. Among those laid off Tuesday was uh, was this Kimbrell Kelly, the newspaper's Washington bureau chief, along with significant cuts to business and sports desks. Hmm. Um, yeah. So it seems like a lot of these these papers are are getting gutted, and I, I'm I'm shocked. Really? It's taken this long? It's interesting to me is the LA Times Washington Bureau got was decimated. That's interesting to me. We have another video coming up today talking about the ad rates this year because it's an election year. And the Washington Bureau is one of the last ones I would have cut. I would have been like, no, lean into the politics, man, because that's where the money is. And uh, they're not they're not going to yeah, do that. Yeah, that's, that's what we're trying to keep the money. Like, we're yeah. going to make a lot of money off of ad rates for that, but we want to keep more of it. I don't but, know. It's a little weird on that one. Uh, the tech columnist got laid off. He said it's a bloodbath. Uh, spokesperson for the Times, which is owned by biotech billionaire Dr. Patrick Soon Shong, did not. This sounds like Dr. Noonien Soon from Star Trek, uh, but Dr. Pat did not comment. So, is this like a play thing? Because all these newspapers, I know, I know it's a common theme. They seem to be getting gobbled up by billionaires. You know, Jeff Bezos, you know, bought yeah, the Washington that's Post. That's what I'm thinking too. And then they said that that they that he, they did speak to this Meg James and said that the newspaper continues to lose 30 to 40 million each year. I believe it. Yeah. So here's here, okay. So this is this is what 2024 is going to be. This is going to be the year that all these media companies are going to course correct because again, the money was flowing pretty freely and pretty stupidly. And a lot of times they were like, well, you know, if we're losing money for five or eight years, that's okay. Cause some sucker will come along and buy us. And they did, you know, a couple of times, some sucker will come along and buy us for a lot more than the previous owner paid for us. So now we're seeing diminishing returns. Now people are like, Oh my God, media in general is a dicey, dicey business uh, to be in. And if you're a smaller, more nimble, you know, outfit, you can survive it. But yeah, you can't, you can't stay in business and lose 30 to $40 million a year, a year. Uh, today's decision is painful, but it's imperative that we act urgently and take steps to build a sustainable and thriving paper for the next generation. That translation, we got to take steps to build a business that is losing money for me. We have to make, we have to turn this into an actual business, not just like some pet project. Like, look, mommy, I bought a newspaper. You know, I'm a billionaire. I can buy whatever I want. I bought X. I buy Twitter yeah. and I'm going to rename it. You know, uh, yeah, you have to make it make money. It's got to make money. Uh, the staffing cut is the fruit of years of middling strategy, the absence of a publisher, and no clear direction. Ooh, ouch. Well, look, when uh, a lot of times when you've got a business that has the potential to make money and it's not making, like Disney, and it's not making money, you have to look at leadership and be like, you know what? These layoffs are your fault. Because if you had actually made smart decisions, we wouldn't have to get rid of so many people. But then they blame, yeah, they blame it on the family. They said, but it's clear those entrusted the steward, that would be the their that Soon Xiong family, uh, has failed them, not the staff members. Yeah, I have mean, no say in the priorities editorial. I well, that's, I don't disagree with that, honestly. Yeah, the newspaper houses the largest 
newsroom in the Western U.S. It's plunged into disarray in recent weeks as it faces a major financial shortfall, losing tens of millions of dollars a year. Its top editor suddenly announced his departure, and two of the four members of an interim leadership team announced they're also going to exit. Wow. Wow. Um, so look, I cannot overstate the level of chaos, one staffer told CNN. CNN's in chaos, too. They're talking about uh, changing up their digital strategy. They've had two or three leaders. Like, nobody knows what to do. Ah, sorry, wait, wait, wait. This is where I have to laugh. The planned layoffs caught the eye of 10 Democratic members of Congress who represent California. The group on Monday wrote Son, Son Chun Xiong, whatever, expressing alarm over the planned layoffs, knowing that during elections, the role of news outlets in providing accurate and unbiased information becomes even more vital. And it's the 10 Democratic members. Hmm, I wonder why. Presume. <laughs> Preserving democracy is contingent upon a free upon and robust. Us owning the, I mean, a free and robust press. Well, yeah. So the LA Times, they're the ones that got in trouble. I remember a few years ago with Disney. Uh, Disney blacklisted them because they reported negatively on some of the stuff going down in Anaheim. They weren't allowed to go to movie premieres, That's true. Or anything like that. And uh, I just think like, it's yeah. funny because the media, it is their job to be. Um, preserve democracy and be providing accurate and unbiased information. The thing is, everybody knows it's not true. Everybody knows that you can look at a media outlet for like 10 minutes and know which, what political bias they have. Oh, yeah. Like, they all have political biases on both sides. It's a running joke. Like, none of them are unbiased. And um, that's what's funny to me. He, he's basically just saying, like, yeah, we would like the, the paper to continue to uh, uphold democracy. Um, but it has to become a self-sustaining institution. This, this well, is well, yes, it has to actually pay, pay for itself. I'm not just doing this as charity. This is this is where everything is headed in 2024. We are going to have to pay the piper. So many of these media outlets were allowed to live past their natural expiration dates because they were bankrolled with venture capital or billionaire money or whatever. And now it's like, you know what? This thing is never going to actually turn a profit. So it's time to kill it. It's time to take old Yeller out back. Mm -hmm. And old Yeller might be uh, Vogue magazine. It might be GQ. It might be Wired. Uh, Condé Nast union workers had a walkout. I think this was yesterday. Um, yeah, Tuesday in New York City. Uh, five, let's see, they're going to lay off 5% of their staff for 300 people. The company announced last week that uh, music outlet Pitchfork is being folded into GQ. That makes no sense whatsoever, but whatever. Uh, they're going to pick it outside the new, uh, the one world trade center. I'm sure lots of people are going to take note and they're going to feel so bad for these journalists, but Anne Hathaway does. Yes. Uh, Anne Hathaway, uh, walks out of a Vanity Fair photo shoot in solidarity with a union work stoppage. Um, this well, what is, else is she going to do to sit there? Well, that's true. But I'm like, here's, here's the thing. Um, they're laying you off because you're not making enough money, right? You're not making enough money. If they look at you and they're like, Hey, these people at the drop of a hat are going to stop working and we can't depend on them anyway. Do you think they're going to keep you long-term? I don't think they're going to keep you. You have to, at this point, you have to prove yourself to be, irreplaceable. And if they look at you and they're like, yeah, we need to replace them because they might go on strike or something and we can replace them with a the computer. I was going to say, we all know what they're replacing them with. But yeah, yeah, we know what. Hey, sport. Well, that was the thing. Sports Illustrated, they shut down completely because they're not making any damn money either. You know, nobody's making money in, in media, but now let, let me, let me rephrase that big corporate owned media companies magazines and websites. They're not making money because they're bloated. They have too much overhead. Meanwhile, you can have individual podcasters and YouTubers make pretty good money. Or even bloggers. Or even if bloggers. They have the right, you know. Yeah, yeah. Or Substack or whatever. They're making money. So individual journalists are making money, but these big bloated corporate backed media entities, they're, they are unsustainable. It's It doesn't work. You can't pay you know, 2000 people, 200 plus thousand dollars a year and, and bleed out 30, 40 million dollars a year indefinitely. Like where, where, what is this monopoly, monopoly money? Do you think it's like, I mean, eventually you have to pay the bill 
on that. And well, that's, no, it's that's just the, the job of the rich people just let them have whatever they want and keep losing money because they're that. Well, that's exactly it. And a lot of people look at that where they're like, well, Jeff Bezos has lots of money. He can just bankroll uh, the Washington Post indefinitely. I'm like, why would he? Look at Elon Musk. He's the richest man in the world. And he's like, you know what? Twitter's got to start pulling its own cool. weight. Cool. I want all of you that say that to go start your own blog or start your own business. Keep losing money every month. Make sure you pay everybody really well. Yes. And then keep losing money every month. Um, so, and then, then, you know, but you're not, you're not allowed to get rid of anybody and you're not allowed to, you know, do make changes to make your money. You're supposed to just use, owe people jobs and that money. Yeah. You have to keep losing money until you fold because you can't afford to keep them going. And also, and also you can't hire the most qualified people, the people that will bring money to the organization. Uh, you do have, we have a list of the kinds of people you need to hire, whether or well, not some they're of them qualified. Have, some of them do a lot of times have to be qualified. Exactly. Well, no, and I do believe that. I'm just saying. You know, um, you want to hire the most qualified people. Activists, I don't necessarily think you're most qualified. No. <laughs> what, you know? is, there, is there a goal to help your company make money, therefore keep themselves employed? Or is there a goal to uh, latch themselves onto your organization like a freaking parasite just to spout off their political hot takes and they get to climb on the podium. All right. They get to climb on the podium and they get to, they get to, uh, abuse the perks, the company perks that but are you for better closers. keep paying them. They're drinking As the they coffee. Destroy, it's for closers. They, they destroy your business. You better keep paying them because it's they'll not complain on social media. If, if you fire them, God forbid you fire them because take away the coffee, take away the coffee. That's for closers. Um, you're, you're taking the coffee away and you know, you're supposed to let them go on three hour, four hour lunch breaks. You know, that's, that's part of being a journalist. They have right? to go on Twitter and put their time in, you know? They have to put their time in on Twitter. Yes. I'm not supposed to do my activism. Where am I supposed my to do my activism? No. Oh my God, guys. I'm the, I'm the chief vibe officer. Like I have to be here because everybody will get sad and they'll be like, oh my God, I hate going to work because it's work every day. That's They're not the least bit annoying to people. <laughs> I hate people like that. <laughs> it's just like, shut up. I've, like, I've worked with people like that. Even when I was younger, I was like, shut the fuck up. I'm like this. Like, I felt like I felt like uh, the cop from Stranger Things because I was like in the morning. I'm like, yeah, it's my coffee and contemplation time. Like people come in and they'd be like, hello, how's everything going? I'm like, shut the fuck up. Oh, OK, I'm not that bad. Get okay. out of my fucking office. I will, I will summon you when I want to talk to you. But right now, I don't want to talk no, to you. No, see, I'll that's, talk just, to you after thinking, lunch. that's just being an asshole. I'm sorry. I was an asshole. You didn't, you wouldn't have liked working for me. You don't like <laughs> that, working for me now. I don't work for you. That's <laughs> I know. The thing. All right, are we, are we going to wrap this up? I'm going to get fired after this episode. <laughs> um, perks are getting cut. My perks? Oh, my God. My perks are getting cut. I'm going to have to complain on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Geeky cut my perks. I haven't had perks in three weeks now. Because I told her to shut the fuck up. I mean. We wrap this up. Uh, yeah. Hey, guys. I'm just going to tell you. If you work for one of these digital outlets, just piece of friendly advice. Shut the fuck up. Like right now is not a good time to be out there. Just be lucky. You have Survive a job. first. Survive first. Then. When when you make yourself indispensable, then you can ask for the moon. But right now, you just gotta survive. You're not gonna you're gonna be very hard. If you wanna get a job in the same industry, it's gonna be very difficult because everybody's cutting. Absolutely. So I'm gonna wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.